Math Cast Number One by Rebecca Hunt. The intended audience is fourth grade. The learning objective is to decompose fractions as a sum of unit fractions using tape diagrams. Okay, we're going to start off with a little vocabulary. You might know some of these, but that's okay. We'll review it anyway. Our first word is tape diagrams, and these are rectangles to show parts in a whole. So over here you can see we have our tape diagram, and this rectangle is our whole, and it has three equal parts to show we have three parts in our one whole. The next word is decompose, and that's change a larger unit into smaller units. So our example is we have one, which is our larger unit, separated or decomposed into three smaller units, or one-thirds. Next is number bond, and this is a diagram to show the decomposing of a number. So again we have one as our larger unit, and it's decomposed into four smaller units, or one-fourths. And lastly is our number sentence, and this is a string of numbers showing a math action like adding or subtracting. So we have one half plus one half equals one. And that's a number sentence showing adding. Alright, so first we're going to start off with a little bit of review. We have a tape diagram up on the screen, and it's divided into two parts. Now it says the whole is ten and we need to find out how much each part is. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide because we have a whole that's 10 and two parts. Now as you can see 10 divided by 2 is 5 so each bar is 5 and we can check our work by multiplying 5 by 2 and does that equal 10? Yep. Okay so here's our next review question and as you can see we have a circle up here instead of a tape diagram. Same concept, different shape. So it asks us, how many circles are there? Well, how many circles do you see up here? Just one, right? It may be divided, but it's still one whole circle. The next question is, how many parts are there? Now, it's still one whole, but we have two separate parts because of this line dividing them in the middle to two parts. Now what fraction of the circle is shaded? So we see here that we have one half of the circle shaded. Now why is that true? Because one half plus one half equals one, which is the amount of circles we have, because one is the whole. So that means this is one half and this is one half, because one divided by two is one half. So this problem is very similar to the problems we just did, except we're going to use a number bond and a number sentence to represent the parts and the whole. So let's look at this problem. First, what do we need to do? We need to figure out our whole. So if we look at the number sentence, we see a 1. So that means 1 is our whole. Now if we look at the number bond, we should see the same thing. 1 is our whole. So our next step is to figure out how many parts is in this whole. Let's count. One, two, three, four. And now we'll see the same thing in the number bond. One, two, three, four. So what's the unit fraction that we're dealing with here? If we have one whole and we divide it into four parts, our unit fraction is one-fourth. And how do I know this is true? It's easy. We just add one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. And what does this equal? It equals one. So we're going to take this information and we're going to transfer it to the problem by putting it in a number bond and a number sentence. So all we've done is put our unit fractions into a number sentence because four one-fourths makes one. So now we have to do a similar thing to the number bond. All we have to do is write one-fourth in each circle because it's the unit fraction. All 
right, so this is our next problem. It's the same concept, but it's just reversed. So we have the number sentence, and we're just going to draw and label the tape diagram. So just like the problems we've been doing, we first need to find our hole. So what is our hole? It's a 1. And what is the unit fraction that they're showing? 1 fifth. And how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 1 fifths. And that's why it's 1. So now how are we going to draw this tape diagram? We're going to take a 1 rectangle that's going to represent our whole and divide it into 5 sections for 1 fifth. Take a look. So here's our tape diagram and as you can see it's divided into five sections and so to label it it equals one so we'll put that on this side and we need to show what each section equals and to do that all we have to do is put one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth and plus one-fifth. We have five sections of one-fifth and that equals one. And there's our tape diagram. Alright, our next problem is very similar to the last one. We have our number sentence, we just need to draw and label our tape diagram. But it's a little bit different because we don't have a one right here. We have five-sixths. And instead of equal unit fractions, we have two-sixths two-sixths and one-sixth. Is that going to change it? Yeah, a little bit, but not too much. So we still have our tape diagram and this still equals one, but the question is asking for five-sixths. So how do we show the difference? We shade it in. See how five-sixths of the tape diagram is shaded in? That's going to help us show what five-sixths is equal to, which is two-sixths plus two-sixths plus one six. So how are we going to do this? The same as last time. We're just going to show how it equals. So it equals five six. And now this part says two six. So instead of just sectioning out one square, we're going to do two squares. And that's the same with the next one. So these will both be Two six. Now the last one is not two sixths, it's one sixth. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's only going to be one square. And there's your tape diagram. It equals five sixths. It has two sixths plus two sixths plus one sixth. And there's still one tape diagram. It's still 6 over 6, but we're only showing 5 6. And that's how you draw a tape diagram. Thanks for watching!